Now then chaps, welcome to another video. Welcome to a cold barn. I don't think it's quite winter yet, but it definitely feels like it, yeah? It's part three or four of the E46 revitalization, regeneration, not quite refurbishment, I won't use that word. Anyway, today we're doing some driveline things. So the car is pretty much back together, including the gearbox. The gearbox is back on, we'll not talk about that. The only thing that's missing is an LSD and some drive shafts. Now one of the drive shafts, the prop shaft, that's good to go with a fresh bearing, but we've got the two axles, axle shaft, whatever you want to call it, the drive shafts, if we call them in the UK. We've got them to put back on and the diff. Now we're going to refurbish them slightly. I know I used the R word there, but we are going to do a little mini refurbishment. We're also going to do some things with LSDs. Right, I've got two LSDs, one from this car, one from this car. I discovered there was a receipt for no more than a thousand miles before me buying the car. It had a full refurbishment with some sporty plates fitted. Now, I've tried to contact the garage who did that. I've not been a big boy and, and rang them yet, but I sent them an email. They've not got back to me. So it did feel good though, and it did feel super tight. So we're gonna do some tests first, right? Because I've actually got a rebuild kit from some friends from the Eastern Europe called Racing Diffs. I've got a rebuild kit and the plan was to rebuild the 3.9 before I put it in here, but I don't think we need to. Now the 4.1, I'll probably go back in this. I might fit the 3.6, I haven't decided yet, but 4.1 is a nice sporty diff. The 3.9 should be just a little bit better for the Nürburgring for Ander Norschleifer, right? So then we're going to try all that, but I think I'm going to get away with not having to do that little rebuild. I bought all the parts, but I think we're going to get away with not having to do it. Let's go over to the workbench. So I've got a little rig on the go here currently. This was the original 4.1 ratio LSD which was on the car for the past few years. A slightly destroyed bush, <laughs> slightly uh, poking out the uh, derriere there. The, the derriere, is that the right? I don't know. Uh, so we've got the, the axles there, the axle shafts. These are the ones off the, the black car as well. Um, we'll go into that a little bit. This is the 3.9 ratio, and it feels just better in the hand. There's no, there's no free play. On the output, there's no free play at all, which on this one there is. Can't really tell now because of the... Um, the little jig that's going on, but what I'm doing here is measuring the breakaway torque. That's the torque that it'll take for the diff to become unloaded, right? And this one measures at a somewhat respectable. So my torque wrench here is currently set to 62 newton meters, right? You can see I can just turn it, but sometimes it sticks, right? And this is not a perfect jig by any means, right? This is this is just we're just doing what we can to, to test what we can. Now, 60, it's, it's, it's not too bad, to be honest, from what I can gather online. I'm aware this is not how you should be doing this, by the way. It's just how I was doing it, so I could compare the diffs back to back. Ideally, you want to be measuring the torque through the center to get an accurate reading. You can actually buy a tool from Racing Diffs to do this. Some people get creative and try and do it themselves, but yeah, I was just trying to measure it in some way so that I could compare both differentials. What I'm gonna do now is put this 3.9 in, in the same jig, and we'll see what that breaks away at, and then we'll be able to decide whether or not we're gonna be going forward this rebuild. Axles, we're gonna strip these down, paint them. We've got some new boots, some new grease. I even bought new abs rings for the wheel speed sensors, but as you can see, fits all BMW models, they said. No, not quite, not quite. So we'll probably try and clean these ones up. Uh, we're only gonna strip the drive shafts from here anyway. We're gonna keep this assembled because I don't have any special tools or anything to, to fix this. We will clean it up, um, but yeah, we're not gonna be, we're not gonna be stripping it. All this will stay assembled. We'll take this end apart and, um, yeah, work downstream, you know, take everything off that away. So anyway, first job, let's get this swapped over and test the breakaway torque on the 3.9. <laughs> this one should be higher, it felt tight on the road. Felt real tight. The receipt that I've got just says modified shim stack for track use, so I don't know, that could be anything, right? Sounds like they know what they're on about. It 
75. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. So it's somewhere between 70 and 75. So not a huge difference. 10, 15 Newton meters difference breakaway. But this felt a lot tighter on the road. Hmm. Let's have a quick peek in the box. Oh, no way. I joked about putting one of the other LSD conversion kits in the E61 and they've sent me one. <laughs> if you haven't seen one of these before, they're pretty cool, right? They're for um, any open diff, well, specifically BMW ones, to turn them into LSD units. I can't believe they sent me one, that's, that's great. Wasn't expecting to get one of these as well. <laughs> right, well, that's it then, the E61s are getting an LSD. <laughs> Ah, God, funny. All right, that'll be a future video for you. I'm looking forward to that already. All right, in this package, this is the E46 M3 stuff. So there's some nice new plates in there. I feel like taking them apart right now would be a mistake, but I recommend having a look on their YouTube channel because the reason I found out about these was I was investigating these diffs, trying to learn about them a bit, and they've got so many videos online on YouTube showing you loads of different stuff. And I even saw um, M359 Chappie, he had one of these kits as well recently. Very good. Racing diffs, shout out. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so let's, let's not rush into this because, as I say, I think this diff's all right. I would like to know more about it. Mm -hmm. See this one, has this free play in the sides. See that? Now I don't know many other companies, maybe you do, who actually make rebuild kits for these. So my suspicions is that this might have already had this kit installed. That's why I don't want to rush into breaking it apart. Plus I'd quite like to have the car back together. So I think we'll use this kit on that diff and rebuild that diff for that car. Yeah, and we'll leave this one complete. The only thing we are going to do, we may as well do it now while it's in the vise, is change these bushes to some solid ones. So let's do that next. But yeah, shout out to Racing Diffs. And thanks for the surprise. Wasn't expecting that, but I guess now the E61 is getting an LSD. Right, so we have 72 Newtons and 55 on the original. I thought the difference would be a good bit greater than that, but no, pretty similar. As I said though, this felt super tight on the um, on the road, and I, t I don't think I'm. I don't think the workshop or myself is currently prepared to do an LSD refurbishment. What do you think? Do you think I've got it in me? I reckon I could do it. All right. I've watched enough of these excellent YouTube videos online, but I think we'll save that for the black car, putting a wise cap on, and for now we'll just change these bushes. Now it's a shame really, because if we were rebuilding this one, this bush is already knackered. So what we're gonna try and do is pull these bushes out of this diff. And we're gonna try and save one of them so that hopefully we can reinstall it on the other side. If not, we'll just, you know, change them all. But how are we gonna do that? We're gonna have to try and press. Ooh, it's gonna be tight, press right around the edge, but we'll give it a go. The bushes that I've got, I say bushes, they're not, there's not much of a bush going on, if you know what I mean. Oh, you bastard. In fact, they'd be uh, pretty ideal to, to press the old ones out with, wouldn't they? But uh, yeah, they're the bushes that are going in. These are from Bimmer World, I believe. Obviously solid ones, so we need to make sure we mount them horizontally and they're slightly elongated in the middle. So let's do that. All right, I'm gonna use uh, this pulling kit to try and get it out. I could do with getting it out that way, but I think that flange is going to be in the way. But we can we can pull it from that side. No, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. It'd be a lot easier if we took the cover off. But I don't really want to take the cover off. I do have a new gasket, but if we were going to take the cover off, we should take that cover off, shouldn't we? Because I've already got the knackered bush. Mm. I, oh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? We could take the cover off. No, uh, do we want to take the cover off? <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see if we can. I don't think I'll be able to get the tool in there. No. All right, let's take the plates off, whatever. 
I've already bought the gasket, so. So, in theory, we should be able to take this off without draining the oil. <laughs> I think there's 16 mil bolts. Sounds likely. Neither of these diffs have the gasket, they're just using sealant. Interesting, isn't it? chill now so we come back to rebuild it you can make all the oil you want now Paul we, we need I don't have any cling film or anything we need to cover the diff with something clean, maybe some bubble wrap. So this is going to press in to that, right, when we wind the nuts in. Living is for other men. This should be nice and simple. This is not supposed to be like this, by the way, it's just a bit. Just a bit fucked. Now we all. Oh, I think my bar's bent. Looking at that, that's no good. So what happened there was, and then I thought it might pull straight. I think I could tell it was bent, but I figured this might pull straight, but no, because this is solid alloy into solid alloy, there's not gonna, oh, that was my fault. Well, obviously it was my fault, but yeah, that diff casing is, is no longer 
available. <laughs> Fuck. Now oh, that's going to be equally difficult to get out. Use that. So are you bent or not? Is it just the threads are stretched in the middle maybe? Fuck knows. Well, we did a cracking job of that. I mean, you could argue that this being solid alloy might help that, like be stronger in the future rather than if it had some rubber in there, maybe. Certainly makes it more difficult to fit, doesn't it? Anyway, let's not procrastinate. Let's not get sad. The new cover plates are about 100 quid, or they used to be, so. Uh, for now, we'll fit it back on here just to protect. Haha! <laughs> Engineer, spell E N J I N E A R. So, once again, another long cut on the channel. Learn by doing. Sorry, racing diffs, if you're watching this, pick it again. So, it turns out if you're doing solid alloy minimum, alloy minimum, alu minimum, if you're doing solid alloy into alloy, knee flex. What happens when there's knee flex? Yeah, you, you can see what happens when there's knee flex. I've got in touch with the uh, the local fabrication man, Dan the Man. He reckons he can sort this out. So we're gonna call it early tonight. Everyone just wait here for me to come back in the morning, yeah? Everyone gonna wait, yeah? We're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll clean these bolts up as well, won't we? Try and make it look nice. Um, it'd be nice to clean the plate up a bit. I was thinking about getting it Aqua blasted, but uh, yeah, we'll just clean the bolts up. It'll look a lot better just for just for having clean heads on the bolts, won't it? Um, he's gonna grind that out and weld it up, and it'll be sound. So yeah, and then when we do go to press the bushes in tomorrow, we'll be super careful that we're not going in. We'll we'll try and get rid of that lip there as well, grind that out a little bit, and yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be double careful tomorrow. But for now, let's just pause. We'll pick this back up tomorrow. This is going to be the fab shop tomorrow, so tomorrow we'll pick up the drive shaft, the axle shafts, right? Close it out with okay. One. Thanks. Next, I'm going to keep it going with some of your usual Friday vibes. My usual Friday, Friday vibes? Who's, what's my? Ah, okay. All right, we're back. <laughs> the DJ's fired it up again. Get on. Right, good news. So Dan sorted out the cover plate. I'm gonna go pick it up tonight. We'll look at that tomorrow and get it fixed back on. Um, the good news is that he cracked the other side as well. He reckons those bushes were um, slightly uh, a few thou out. So, uh, but anyway, it's all done now. They're all good to go. I'm picking it up later. So anyway, let's have a quick little tidy up and get on with these axle shafts. DJ, how did you go from that to that? Yeah, fuck, you're crazy, man. Okay, moving on. Let's relive a little 2022. I got some of your top songs that year. Start with Cass's Day. Oh. Oh. Oh, nice. Right. This is going to be a, a messy job. I've never done um, a BMW Axle Chef before. Done plenty of Hondas and MR2s, so how different can it be? Huh? So, from what I gather, we start on this one. So, we need to break this cup off, which will be done by use of force. Maybe a little punch. Copper armor is still MIA, unfortunately. I need something a bit. Butter. Don't really want to use. Hmm. Maybe too big. Oh god. Oh, 
Hello. Lovely. So yeah, the joints themselves feel fine and there's no vibration or anything. So we're just gonna uh, change the grease. Uh, could do with a little grease capturing device. We're gonna change the grease and change the boots. The boots again are fine as well, but 20 year old, you know. This grease is in a lot better condition than what I thought it was gonna be. It's knackered like, but it's not like ridiculous. Some of the Honda ones, some of the old MR2 ones as well, as soon as you take the boot off, it just starts glooping. There's a circlet. Still looks reasonable. Old grease. Still looks reasonable. That's impressive. Alright, I think the next step should be to try and get this ABS ring off cleanly. This side, the wheel side's a lot more corroded. It's easy when you know how. So the problem here is, this is actually pressed in, uh, clamped in, what's the word? These two, this is actually two pieces, but it's uh, clamped together. And without a special tool, you can't clamp it back. It's definitely got some, this car's done 110,000 miles. It's definitely got somewhere on it, but I don't think it's anything to worry about. Definitely the most worn out of them all. That's got barely any. Let's try and get the ABS ring off. I'm hoping we can get this ABS ring off and service it, reuse it. I'm a little bit concerned about this. I don't like this. Kids trying to play dance hits. No DJ. Okay, moving on. Here's some music from Linkin Park and a few others you've been listening to these days. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna Google about this and strip that and then we'll catch back up. This side ABS sensor came off wonky. Uh, it's not broken. I looked at the eBay listing this morning of these and it specifically says not for M3 or 330. So, hey, hey, hey. That's probably as good as we're gonna get it. Oh, that one came off perfect. Yeah, there's just like a little bit I can't get out, but I think it'll be all right. This one was a lot more corroded, so blame that. Okay. I've made a decision that we're gonna try and break this open. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to service it properly. We're not gonna be able to clean the grease out and stuff, are we? Now the issue is that this, other than being quite corroded, is pressed in, it's clamped in around there. So we need to break that. We can just about see the edge just there. I don't know if you can. We can just about see the edge. And yeah, we need to get that over. And then when we're done, we need to try and put that back in place. I've just watched a guy 
on YouTube do that with just a, well, he did a screwdriver, but yeah, I think we can just punch it back on and just have it done that way. So let's do that. I made a few minor indentations on accident. We're in too deep now to stop, we can't go home. Fuck you. <sighs> Those snap rings are the same. Uh, the cage doesn't seem sided. The question is, do we think we can get that to seal again? I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I think this is gonna be fine, actually. That fits pretty good, actually. It's not perfect, but it'll go on. I thought I was doing it some serious damage, taking it off, but it looks all right. All right, I get the other one, and then we've got an almighty cleanup operation. I'm not gonna to touch the camera, so I'll just keep it going. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. I'm having a fun time. Um, yeah, well this, part is pressed on from the factory. Yeah. This bit where I'm trying to knock off here now, so I'm trying to, without damaging it, take it off. Obviously it's 20 year old and corroded as fuck, so. Just trying to be real gentle. But I managed to, I fucked that one. Get, oh, have you fucked yeah, I fucked it, but I managed to bend it back around with oh, pliers, so. It back over. I think it'll be all right, yeah. How'd you go on? It's not a pizza. Oh. Yeah. Nice. It'll want a good clean, because it's obviously. Yeah. Sound. Thank you very much. Save the day. I thought I might have this done by the time you did that, but you've you've beasted me. Mm. Alright man. Thanks for doing that for me. Ah yeah, cheers. <sighs> this Spotify DJ is wank, he's fucking He's just decided I'm going to stop for a bit. Fucking hell. All right, there's no way to get these off cleanly. I wasted a lot of time trying to get that off cleanly. Don't you want me? All right, I'm gonna have a well-needed break. A well-deserved break. Fucking hell. Blech.
Right, I have just spent what felt like, well, it was hours cleaning, cleaning and, and cleaning and it's now a grease, TV grease free zone. Maybe there's a little bit there, but oh, everything is nice and clean. Clean balls, clean cage, clean balls. Not cleaned my ring yet. My rings still need a little clean. Uh, but everything's clean, everything's degreased, right? So now it's time to prepare for some paintings. I'm not sure how I'm gonna paint the axles. I guess I, guess I could put them in the, in the vise. Um, so I'm gonna use some Jotun paint, the paint that we used on the floor of that and the floor of this. It's an epoxy primer. And then I'm just gonna go over it with, with some black spray paint. I'm gonna paint these bits and the cups where the ABS ring goes and everything. I don't think I'm gonna bother painting these bits because they're in pretty good shape. Now they are visible, but for whatever reason, they've held up quite well. Maybe, maybe I should just, maybe I should just paint them. Hmm, maybe, 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 I'll decide. But yeah, I need to scrape off all this old. So the, the original finish is obviously corroded quite, oh no, I just, oh no. Oh, oh no, I thought we got rid of it. Okay, there's still a bit lingering around, but I mean, I've cleaned everything in here twice now, all my tools and everything, man. What a, what a lovely thing the CV grease is, right? Beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start preparing for paintings now. Hmm. Got through so many rags. So these parts are from the short shaft, these parts are short shaft redemption, these are from the long shaft. Just saying that so that I remember, but maybe I'll put it in the video too to show how organized I am. I just got them in bare metal, but I need to dash. Uh, looked at the time, I need to go. Also, just unexpected O-ring discovery. Bollocks. Didn't know about that. Ah, uh, shithouse. Operation might be delayed. Luckily, I didn't start brewing any paint just yet. Uh, sit back in the morning. Don't worry, back in the, stay there. Everyone just stay there, right? I'll be back. All right, we're back. We're so back. Let's just take a minute to um, talk about what's happened so far in, in this video. So we started looking at diffs. Um, we're gonna stick with the, the rebuilt 3.9, rebuild the other one for the, for the other car. I'll, I'll see how we get with the 3.9. Maybe we'll go back to the 4.1 anyway, but while I've got two LSDs, it, it makes more sense to rebuild the one that's not being rebuilt, right? Since so we know the other one feels all right. So LSDs are, um, yeah, Dan's welded that backing plate up for me, so thank you very much. So that's the diffs, the diffs good to go. We need to reseal it. Now, both those diffs were sealed with sealant. I had a look online on the, on the parts on real OEM and I ordered a couple of paper gaskets, which is how they're sealed from the factory with paper gaskets. And it seems everyone just sacks the paper gasket itself and uses sealant. Apparently the paper gasket will leak. So now I'm at a conundrum where I've bought these, they weren't that expensive, but I bought these paper gaskets. Let's say they were a tenery. I, don't, I can't remember how much they were, but you know, a genuine BMW paper gasket, right? Bought it. So the question is, do I use it and hope it doesn't leak or do I go with the sealant method, which I don't actually think I've got any sealant anyway, so maybe it will be paper gasket and, and hope it doesn't leak. I'm pretty sure if it did leak, we could probably change it in the car but we would then lose the gearbox oil. And um, yeah, it's not cheap, is it, the, the differential oil? Anyway, that's something for me to figure out. 
the axle shaft, the axle shaft, the drive shafts. That's been a lot more effort than what I was expecting. I've rebuilt drive shafts loads on the front wheel drive style stuff, like in the MR2 and the and the Civic and the Integra and all that. First time doing a BMW one, didn't realize it would be so intensive. A lot of stuff which simply didn't want to be serviced. And to be fair, I reckon those those axles would have gone on for, for quite a, a bit longer as well, but 20 year old stuff, I wanted to refresh it, right? I didn't want to go to the Nürburgring and you know tear a CV boot or you know knacker a drive shaft or anything like that. I'm trying to do things, like that's why we've got fresh wheel bearings and everything. I'm just trying to, you know, make sure the car's gonna be all right. Now the issue as we left yesterday was finding out that these, uh, was it the output or the input on that drive shafts has an o-ring on it i've never seen a cv joint with an o-ring on it before and the way that i discovered it had an o-ring was by damaging the o-ring if i'd have seen the o-ring there i obviously would have pulled it off and um, you know put it to one side while i cleaned out the, the the flange yeah but we've damaged it so we need to replace it i'm i'm dubious whether or not it actually needs an o-ring there but if they put one there, we'll go with it, right? So one of the jobs for today will be to remove that damaged one, measure it, try and order some spares. Um, that does mean that obviously the rebuild's gonna be delayed for a couple of days, but. Hmm. So I hope you didn't go rusty overnight, bare metal, did you? We'll give you another clean, but. No, just rust particles. Anyway, we can pick up the, the paintings, we can get that done. So that one's got chunks out, but anyway, from when I was removing the, uh, removing the clamped section, but this one, yeah. So it's torn. Now I did buy some O-rings for the diff, some uh, output things, but I think they're going to be too big. I mean, they could be around the same size, but they look a bit thicker. Yeah, maybe the diameter is the same, but they do look a bit thicker. Yeah, that's a shame. They're to the same length, the same um, circumference. I don't know how you measure O-rings properly, but they're the same. It's just that this one's a good bit thicker. I mean, did you start out that thick and you've shrunk? Could that be a, a thing that happens? I mean, it's not tea bag that. It's definitely the right circumference. It's just, uh, it's a little bit thick. This one's, probably about three mil and this one's like five mil so anyway so that gives us a good reference point anyway if I can find out the size of these I'll just get one or a couple in a slightly smaller width and that'll be that but anyway I'm gonna get things cleaned up painted and then yeah we'll have a good time with the Jotuns right I've done some investigations I'm pretty confident these are the same there's probably some method to the magnets, right? If it could be, it could be slightly smaller. But will it will it fit inside? No, it won't fit inside. So the inner diameter of this one, according to real OEM, is 90, right? I think they're the same. It's just that the other one's a little bit thicker. Anyway, I've measured them, and this one's three mil thick. This other one's two mil thick. So even though it looks drastically different, it measured, measured the same. Anyway, I can get O-rings, no problem. I can get five, five O-rings for £3.50 delivered or something. So let's not worry about these. We'll pull the O-rings out of the way and we'll get things cleaned up. I would like to distinguish a second. Uh, I would like to make distinction. <clears throat> There's a should be a distinction pin. <laughs> Hello? Where's, where's fucking, where's that gone then? We 
tidied it up into next week. I'm looking for the hub nut. I want to put a hub nut on one of these to distinguish which one goes on the short shaft. Oh, the short shaft redemption. Ugh. Yeah, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll get on with it. Right, engineers, tell me if I'm wrong here. I've put the O-ring back on, measured the outer diameter, 94, and I know the O-ring's two mil, therefore the inner diameter, yeah? Yeah? Is that an accurate test? I'm calling it, I'm saying it is. It's an O-ring anyway, who cares, right? Now there's some labour in this, you know. Some labour in this. I've got these cleaned up about the best I can. I'm actually going to use some rust converter on these, specifically these two cups. Everything else is uh, maybe a little bit on these as well if we're, if we're going to get it out. I don't really like using rust converter. I'd rather, well, I'm sounding like I know what I'm on about here, but I'd rather get rid of the rust and then seal it, right? Um, rather than using a rust converter. But yeah, I've just spent a long ass time man oh I tried a new technique as well yeah yeah you know to to mask yeah we need to mask these off i don't want any paint going inside obviously where the the balls or the cages go so we'll mask up everything we'll get this all masked um but yeah first i'm just going to run some yeah i'll put some bit of rust converter on on these parts just because there's quite a lot of rust kind of ingrained that I can't quite get to and yeah we'll just put some everything's keyed up good to go now we'll probably have to well I don't know can you can you primer over rust converter does, doesn't sound like a thing does it I'll have to look into that but yeah I'm just gonna run a bit on these just to uh, yeah just to try and help them a little bit other than that everything's going pretty well it's just time consuming so time consuming even with power tools I mean all the all the keying's been done by hand, obviously, but time consuming, man. Hope it's worth it. Now we wait. You take the manual. 
What's that doing there? Check the manual. Well, we'll see if a paper gasket leaks or not. I got my money's worth though. <laughs> These have been chilling for about an hour and a half now. These about an hour. So I'm gonna sand, sand them again. All the bits of rust. The rust converter will just stay in the lower levels where I can't get rid of the rust, if that makes sense. I think it's time to crack on and get that done. Hey Siri, how long does slow drying degreaser take to dry? How long does slow drying degreaser take to dry? Check it out. No. So it might have been an idea to buy a decent quality brush. But the problem is I had some in the drawer. Not decent quality. Hmm. Looking very brushed, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could do a spray in it really, but it's good quality stuff, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Um I'm gonna fit the diff now. You. Hmm. We'll come back and give us another coat, but that needs to be sealed otherwise it's going to go off real quick what can we seal it with don't spill well after all that time in the in the preparations department just one thing has let me down what's that the brush that i used i've brushed this on on other stuff loads of times and had good results but not today I mean I'm not that asked how it looks really I'm gonna look orange and crumbling away which it's not gonna do so anyway I'm gonna leave it a little while now it takes at the current temperature it takes 26 hours to fully cure um, but I'm just gonna leave it until the time it takes to put the diff back in I'm gonna do that next and then before I go home, I'll just, there's a couple of bits that I just want to touch up. Um, I mean, fucking you know, yeah, less, less than, uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not that arsed really. I'm not going to pretend like I'm properly bothered about it, you know, with the brush strokes and all that. I just, you know, it would be nice if it was a bit smoother, but yeah, I mean, remember when I did this on the Integra, I bought specifically, specifically, I bought a really uh, decent brush to do it with and 
I don't remember using, I mean, what else have I used this on? What else did we paint recently? Painted something recently, what was it? I can't remember what it was, but I didn't have the, uh, I didn't have this issue and it's just, yeah, just using cheap brushes. I bought a load of cheap brushes, like disposable, because you, you only really use brushes once, don't you, when you're fucking about like me, yeah. Anyway, it'll still look better than what it did, Dan. All right, so Dan. let's get this diff in so we can do that. That paper gasket sticks out, it's weird, isn't it? Is it leaking? Oh, are you leaking already? No, I don't think it's leaking anyway. Um, yeah, so we're going to get Jackie's help on this. We'll lift the car up. Yeah, the GoPro died there, but don't worry about that. Uh, the, the front default on this was a bit, you know, getting used to it now, aren't we? How deep is your hole? There, right, let's finally get the fucking diff in the car, man. Oh man, this is one of them. They need a smooth floor at times. It's nice to have a roof on my head, but a smooth floor would be sweet. Could you do a delete in the spare tire thing? Oh, Jackie. Oh, Jackie. I don't remember this being so difficult. Shit, I'm in a bad place here. Jesus, I know they went on the floor. Well, they went on the floor with some pace. Maybe Jackie, maybe you step aside. Appreciate your help and everything, but I'll fucking wank there. Maybe this is a, a job for Manuel. Oh, you're so heavy. Am I going to be able to press that in there? It's not that heavy, is it? Just a bit heavy. Should I should try and get on my chest. Probably scratch that as well. Um, so we need to try and get the nose. It needs to like go in like that. And then probably we want to have a bolt. Handy. Might be able to use a jack. I'll try going manually. It's not heavier than a gearbox, it's just awkward. I wonder how much these actually weigh. They're fucking big units. I hope the oil seal's working. 
hope I don't end up with summer teeth. Fucking hell. <laughs> Hey up. It keeps pretending, but where is the hole? The car's just a little bit too high. It feels like it might have gone in. Have you got it? Bolt. <sighs> Fuck off. No light stay. Well, I'm very glad I cleaned those threads anyway. Especially now. Okay. Fuck. That was stress. Well, maybe not stress, but sketch. Hello khakis. Where's the big bastard bolt then? Where is the big bolt? Who's that? I don't know. I'm not sure if we need that washer between anymore, but we can do it. Jeez. You didn't see that. It's all good. Let's have a little pack up. The diff's we're not talking it up, it's the, the bolts are pretty much there, but effort that was. Let's do a little bit more primings and then I'm gonna go home. Should we try a different brush? The paint's good. Do I have another brush? I think they're all the same fucking shitty ones. What is going on here? Oh, that's way worse. Hmm. Kind of keep putting paint on and hoping for the best. That's not how it works, is it? Right, I'm going to come back in two days and uh, hopefully this all looks good. I mean, we'll, we'll sand it a little bit and then paint it black. But I mean, there's less brush strokes this time. I went a little bit over the top with the paint, I think, at this time. That no, looks pretty good, actually. Well, looks better than what it did. Everyone here got happiness. You got some good coverage, mate. We'll see what this looks like. And then put some black paint on it. A lot of small rings in the meantime. Maybe they'll come next day, you never know. We might be able to get this rebuilt on Tuesday night. And I'll find out some more about the diff. Yeah. How are you going? All right, we're a couple of days in the future. It's freezing, no, it's not freezing, freezing. It's about five degrees Celsius, science. It's at like 40 F. Just gonna show you what the uh, finish ended up looking like, if we can, uh, around this side with the lights on it so I mean it's it's got the brushed aesthetic you could say right it doesn't matter that much I mean there's a bit of uh, yeah, a bit of overlap here but it has dried good it said 26 hours and it's been more like 48 yeah more like 48 hours obviously there's a few bits which are uh, ooh. <laughs> a few bits where the can you see that a few bits where the brush didn't quite... Oh no! Oh, that's dead. 
Well, oh, it was always going to be dead anyway, wasn't it? But yeah, that's uh, that's not ideal. Where it's can you even see that? Come on. Yeah, it's uh, um, well, when we brush must have missed that bit, eh? How about the uh, shizer? Oh, <laughs> that's a bit stuck. All right, that's to be expected, I guess, somewhat. So there's no way I'm gonna be able to make it smooth, like. Fuck, that's really stuck. What about you? You all right? I find you, mate. I tried not to get too much where the O-ring goes. The O-rings haven't turned up yet, but we'll uh, try and get some paint on them today. It's a bit cold. I'm gonna warm things up with the heat gun before spraying them. I'm gonna warm up the paint in some hot water, and hopefully we'll be all right. But yeah, I'm. I thought it was going to look a lot, lot worse than what it does. Let's continue. There is some more sandpaper somewhere. Oh. Now we'll go with this mystery paper. do it by hand. Shit, did I not wait for the degreaser? Shit, I should have busted it all with a heat gun. Shit, that looks wank. Something's gone on there. I can't remember why I bought slow drying stuff, but there was a reason. Strange, eh? So half of the stuff went weird. It's probably a mixture of the temperature and the surface preparation, of which I am an expert on neither. I'm gonna go with heat. The drive shafts look really good, it's just these. Heavy lump, some kind of dampener, vibration absorber. We'll leave that off for now. It's heavy. 1.6 kilos in the box. So, just to add to the NVH of everything else, these are solid gearbox mounts. Billet. No. 
used to be there, little boy. Feels like these could come loose quite easily. With all the vibes. You know? We'll probably save engine mounts until we strip the front subframe down. So go on after the prop shaft. That one's sorting out, isn't it? That all needs doing, but it's just time, man. Like, maybe when I do the front end, we'll do it from, from there. We'll see the prop and everything needs to, well, does it need to come out? Maybe, maybe not. The brake lines and all that. I just want to make sure there's no hole there, you know. Which is not, it's pretty pitted, but it's no hole. Might just put some rust converter on it for now. That's probably the worst place you could have failed. This does not fix the problem, it just buys us some time. Brutal now, these E46s. Mine's a good one. Ish. Well, this Discovery is upsetting and it's not bad it's just some little bits but ideally the floor needs doing the floor's never been done and the you know what's what's lurking inside the front axle but do we want to get the car off the ramp or not <laughs> do we want to drive the car yeah we don't want it rusting to bits but it's been on the ramp for two three months now man Ugh, upsetting I think for now I'll just uh, let that cure overnight and throw something on it in the morning. I've got s all sorts of stuff sealing. I could just chuck some hammerite on it for now, man. Like, just to, to you know protect it a little bit, but uh, yeah. I think the the drive shaft has go on before that heat shield anyway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put the uh, the prop shaft on. And, uh, yeah, we need to. Get some CV grease in that lot, I think. Clean it up a bit. There's a gasket as well, which I do actually have one somewhere. Unless this has still got it on. Yeah, it's still got it on. Still greased up. Could maybe top the grease up a little bit, maybe. Yeah, probably worth doing, isn't it? that little clean up and put some fresh grease in it. Now I will be there. Hey, if we're doing the drive shafts, why aren't we taking this one apart? Well, I did already. Not fully take it apart, but I did service it a little bit before. And the grease as you can see, it's still pretty good. I do agree though, we should be we should be stripping this and doing it as well, but uh, I'm just getting sick of the car being on the ramp, man. Okay.
Take that overnight. Come back tomorrow. Do some lacquer rings. Yeah. We're getting there. Axle shafts. Well, this should hopefully be the last day. Bloody cold though, so much so that I uh, thankfully remembered this old girl only had water in her uh, cooling system. So uh, not even deionized, it was at the tap at Snetterton, I think. So I've just spent a long time pissing about, draining some out and putting some more in. The good news is I have O-rings. They arrived yesterday. Took a little bit longer than what I would have liked. So I've not been up through the week much. Um, these are not getting lacquered because why would we? Uh, I consulted the uh, the expert. Why would we? But yeah, they, they came out pretty well, I think. Obviously, um, you can you can you know get a feel for the process, can't you? But as far as rust preventation goes, I mean, we should be all right. So it's uh, rebuilding time, and hopefully this is going to be the last little entry of this video. Oh, where's that thing come from? Huh, don't remember there being a dint in the door, but let's. Uh, yeah, this should hopefully be the the last little entry, and we should have the car rolling by the end of this. So let's get cracking. Where did I put the circlips? In other people's lives, so now it's happening in mine. So the method is not this. So we're going to get, I've cleaned the vise, so there should be limited schmoo on the vise. <laughs> Could do without it moving as much, but I don't think we're going to get that. But now we should be able to get two in, we should be able to get two in, okay. And now we need to work around in a circle. The last one's the hardest. Oh, I got five in. Put you back in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Painful. Pretty painful. Want you back in my life. Uh, so the O-ring 
is on there too. So the next job is you, mate, I think. Do you want some more grease? No, it's pretty pretty greasy in there, isn't it? Maybe try and just cover those gaps up a bit. Please balance. Right, we need to get rid of these hard bits. These little things, there's a bit of a lip around here from when it was bashed off. Uh, we might just be able to force it on, but I don't really want to knacker the uh, O-ring. I swear I tested this and it, it went on after taking it off. Maybe we just need to central it. That's been such a long time and it's just not not grabbing it's sit it's not gonna come off it's on there but it's just not biting oh, fucking hell man that's been a long time there with a the chisel fuck right i just did the unthinkable and looked up a guide online and uh man this is this is so much more involved than like a front wheel drive thing i know i've said that already but so I've spent ages trying to get this, uh, what do you call it? The bit of metal there to, to crimp round, yeah? And I've just watched a guy online, so I was like, right, let's see, how, let's see how the experts do it, the YouTube experts. And they actually put sealant, like a gasket sealant, on the face of that, so it, it sits on with like a, a bit of gasket sealant. Now, I don't know if that aids it's, it stopping moving, but I mean, it's definitely not, it's definitely not crimped on there it's, it's not it's not crimped. I mean, I've got some gasket sealant, I think. What have I got here? Some... Yeah, gasket gasket maker. We, we, we can find some gasket sealant, right? I mean, I don't know if it's rated for the application, but this is way more... Uh, this is this is a lot more... This is, this is... I think the kids would say this is extra, right? <sighs> Alright, today... Today has gone badly. But, um, we'll turn that into goodly. What? I don't know, right? I don't know if you're following what's going on, but basically I've, I've managed to get this back off again. Yeah, obviously the, the finish on it is, is pretty ruined now, right? Uh, I've just been spending the past 10 minutes or so making this go on and off easier like that, right? It's still dragging a little bit, but I can maybe make it better. So the reason I'm doing that is once I finally got this off, I noticed there was a tear in the O-ring. And um, if you remember, it was quite hard to get on over the O-ring. And it might still be the same once I put a, a fresh O-ring on, but I can, I can make this a little bit better. But we are pausing for the day. I shouldn't have said today would be the last day. That was a mistake because we do, do, do need some sealant. Now, I'd heard about this sealant on the inner ones, but uh, on the guy on the internet, he did it on the outer ones as well. And I thought about it and I thought, hmm, why are you putting sealant on to stop grease getting out? What, what's, I've, you know, you'd never do that on a Honda, on a, on a on a Toyota. You'd never put sealant on a drive shaft face seal. Well, it's completely different, of course. And thinking about it, it's not just to uh, stop grease getting out. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons, but it's not, is it? It's not about grease getting out. It's about moisture getting in. That's what we're sealing. So I'm going to go and get some sealant because I can't find any decent sealant kicking about. Uh, I'm going to nip to the shop. It will come back up in the morning and 
hopefully then I'll have everything that we need. As for this, it looks like people just put it on there and just, yeah, just, just smack it in. So we'll just do that. Maybe it was, I don't know, less than ideal in the, where I had it before, but that's nice and loose now, look. We can get it on and off nice and easy. So what I'll do is, I've already started cleaning this, but we'll put a bead of sealant around the outer edge of that, and then that can go on. I mean, I've cleaned up this face as well, but I don't know if we're doing that. But anyway, that's tomorrow, so the video lives on. Nearly there. <laughs> Not. <laughs> oh, it's, it's... It's fresh. Very fresh. One degree outside. It can't be much more in here. It's very cold. Halfers didn't have... They've stopped doing the good sealant. Well, this is probably all right, but... Stop doing the Loctite stuff. Ah. Uh, we need to get this done today. So, you know, we need to get this done today. We need to, uh, did I mention that we need to get this done today? Do you reckon this might be a good colour match? Hey, do you reckon this might be a... <laughs> Woohoo! I think there's still some in there. It's been there a while. Oh, oh. I think it might have... Uh, I have to put that on the hot plate for a bit first, but uh, yeah, we might, we might, <laughs> we'll put that there. Might, uh, yeah, I might stick it on the hot plate. There's not a lot of action going on in there. It's heavy. There must be at least half of it in there still, but yeah, that might, that might be the, uh, that might be a, yeah, yeah, you know, it wouldn't be a DC2 build without some hammerite. We can probably put that on the. Um, those little rusty bits that we found as well. They're just chilling, just chilling boys. All right, let's get this done. I'm not gonna video for a bit because I want to get it done and then I'll, I'll put the head cam on when I've figured out and I've got one built, all right? Yeah, let's just, I need to make some progress. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what are you doing? All right, we're a few hours on. I've got one basically built. I mean, I say basically built. I've not put the boots on yet. Um, I'm having a bit of a, a brain tingler here. Right, just uh, so it might be a bit easier if I put a picture up of this, but the teeth of the splines are like inset almost, just like they are on the shaft, which means that when it's this way, it goes on just fine. I want to look at some pictures online that they're all like this, like it will locate there, but you know, I was just tapping it on there with a hammer as a test, just, just giving it some, some light taps, and it just wouldn't go on. Whereas you flip it round, so this is the wrong way, it fits real nice. But then when we put the circlip on, hang on. So yeah, basically the, if you put the circlip on, then it's meant to be sat against that seat on the other side, so that's not right. I mean, it's, is it gonna make such a difference to really worry about? So this should just be a, few little taps to get it started but it's too much that man it's too much I certainly don't remember it being like this before <sighs> I won't go on further than that now and I've smacked my hand hard you know when stuff it feels wrong I've not got my I've changed the memory card since doing all the other bits and can't cross reference. I mean, I built the other shaft wrong if I've done it wrong then. I mean, how important is it where the, the circlip sits? I don't know. But it won't go on that extra bit now to get the circlip on. <laughs> so, the reason, ah, I found so many pictures with this on the outside, but it turns out they were all from E30s, right? And for whatever reason, it's on the inside. And now I need to try and get this off again because it's on the wrong side. Fucking hell. Long cut. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But oh yeah. This is that's happening. Oh yeah. Let's hope it's serviceable. Uh, pain. Right. I, don't, I hope this is coming across well on, on camera. But this is some right fuckery. Like I've seen loads of videos online where this goes outwards, right? But when I when I took them off, I didn't have to get a fucking puller out. So it must have to sit like that, but then why is there a recess for the circlip on that side? The I mean, job's fucked now anyway, because I've, I've knackered one of the circlips fucking about so much. 
So we can't put the shafts back together today. Um, so put that back in the box. We can get this one side done, but we're gonna have to do it. It won't go like that. It just won't go. It won't go. Ah. <laughs> Could have done with some soft jaw things for the device. Tell you that. Let's just let's just get this back together. I mean, whatever. It, it must have been on like that, despite what everything online says. Well, I say everything online. I did find a guy with an E36 shafts and he was doing it this way because he says it only goes on one way. He says, you're right. It just, just definitely feels like it only goes on one way. But then why is that there for the circlift when it on the arse end of it? It doesn't make sense. But anyway, I just do still have one good circlift. If I'm buying, if I'm buying new ones anyway, I might as well replace them all, right? Well, let's see if this goes on all right. See now this has, it has like a little bit of a movement which that would be taken up by that recessed bit on the other side. Ah, it's so, this is stressful. In fact, we don't have to get stressed. We don't have to get stressed. Let's slow down. Let's tidy up. It's freezing, let's just go home. Yeah. I'm gonna end this video here. I'll give you a cliffhanger. I'm going to end this video here. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Is that... I, I, I just can't, can't... It doesn't make sense. Ugh, fucking hell. Ugh. Right, whatever. Marge, I'm confused. Is this a happy ending or a sad ending? It's an ending, that's enough.